welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Bob DeMarco. Coming up, we're going to take a look at a new Stroop knives in my collection, uh, mini bag lighter. And then we're going to take a look at some knives I've drawn and then made, and then some notable designs. Now, all that being said, you know I'm not a knife maker, I'm a hobbyist, but I've always been a draw, uh, a drawer and always been a, a doodlist, if you will. And knives have always been something that I doodle, um, especially in the last, I'd say, 10 years, 10, 12 years at work in the in the margins of my, of my um, legal pads at work. In any case, uh, one of my New Year's resolutions, uh, besides the requisite get in shape, drink less, uh, you know, be more attentive and all that kind of stuff, uh, which is all good stuff. I don't mean to just uh, dismiss it out of hand. But one of my real New Year's resolutions is to make more knives, not in any sort of uh, way to try and uh, be enterprising about the enterprise, but just to work with my hands. That's kind of I've always been someone who likes to draw, someone who likes to work with his hands, someone who likes to make things, not just in this virtual world, but in the real world. And uh, you know, I've made a few knives here and there. I like to show them off. I show them off over and over. But, uh, you know, I think I think like any other thing, if I worked at it, I could be good at it. And uh, so this year, I'm just going to work more with my hands. I'm going to make more knives just for my own edification and, uh, you know, to give away as gifts and that kind of thing. Uh, so in, in sort of thinking about this new year's resolution, I went through my sketchbooks. I have a lot of them, you know, uh, I went to art school. So sketchbooks are something you have to have. It's like a sort of having a journal or something. Um, but it turned, uh, all the sketchbooks turned to knives at one point. I stopped trying to not trying, I stopped drawing heads and human figures and landscapes and stuff and just, honed in on knives. So uh, we're going to take a look at some of that stuff and some of the knives I've made from those designs and then some notable designs I'd like to make in the future. But before we get to any of that uh, high flying stuff, uh, I wanted to just show you what I was carrying in my pocket because that's really the main thrust of this show is showing off our knives and talking about new ones as they come out. Uh, so here we go. Today I was carrying the Civivi Riffle. Now this knife funny name, the Riffle. I know Civivi has a lot of interesting names, but once you get over that, uh, this has been a lot of people's budget knife of the year. And I got mine, oh, I'd say about a month ago. So towards the very end of 2021, beginning of December, I got this Riffle uh, along with this Civivi Brazen from a good friend of the show, uh, Blade Hobby. And these Two knives are knives that we covered here on the Midweek Supplemental over 2021 that had really interested me. This one at first did not until I heard everyone that I respect talk about how great it is. And then the brazen I wanted anyway. Got a, got a, a great two-point deal here. But anyway, I've been carrying this one a lot. This is so thin. Uh, the riffle blade is so thin. It's flat ground. They, they do a lot of hollow grinds over at Civivi, which I love. But this one is a very well, beautifully, uh, fully flat ground blade. Someone on Thursday Night Knives this past week said uh, it's their best flat ground ever at Civivi. I don't know about that, but I do know that this thing is thin and slicey and cuts like mad. Plus, the ergonomics are perfect. You know, for a neutral, a neutrally shaped handle, this sort of crook in the back is perfect. So you can trend, uh, you can you can go into this reverse grip and you have great purchase for your thumb. Uh, but really, we're mostly going to be using this knife like this in this sort of saber grip or choked up like this, uh, going through cardboard and such. And this is just a great EDC knife and it's got incredible style. And at, I don't know, 70 bucks, 65 bucks, it's a great value. You know, it's a Civivi. We've been talking about Civivi for a for a long time in the blade uh, in the knife community and i i like them better than we you know their their big sister brand their their luxury brand or their i don't know what do you call it their father brand really because they sprung out of that i like them better than we and i like them better than send cut their even more budget uh, version i think civivi is probably my favorite sort of well my favorite you know, over-engineered Chinese knife right now. I just think they're awesome. Okay, so moving on. What else did I carry today? Well, I, I in my 
uh, front left pocket instead of a pocket knife, instead of a small knife, I carried my stout, uh, Jason Stout, stout knife uh, and tool Broner. Yeah, that's right. Broner. He has he's got a lot of funny names for his products and I like them. They they uh, they're always a little risque and they always uh, have a little bit of a pun. This is a Broner. And I think bro, because you can open your beers with it, bro. Uh, but also you can scrape you can scrape that parking ticket off your window with this uh, sort of front part here. And, uh, you know, it's just a stylish little uh, little pry bar uh, keychain tool. And I love it. And and uh, after uh, Jason Stout came on the show, he sent this to me as a as a gift as a courtesy and i was i was really psyched about it it's so cool you know this is uh milled d2 and you can see a lot of his signature design style here with those lines you see these lines here on the lateralis and and others of his uh, of his work so uh, every once in a while i'll drop the broner in the pocket and just uh you know pretty much not use it because i don't pry stuff often and unfortunately drinking beer during the day isn't part of my ritual so <clears throat> Uh, maybe tonight, though. Uh, and then lastly, what was I carrying? Uh, this. It was probably my my most prized uh, Blade Show 2020 or 20. God, when was that? That was 2020. Uh, my my uh, my most prized purchase there. This is a custom made, handmade uh, Dirk Pinkerton Pical blade. Uh, I here here it is a uh, very very nice kydex sheath. I put an ulti clip. This was the last one at the ulti clip stand at Blade Show. That's right, that's right. You were wondering who got it. It was me. <laughs> okay, so anyway, uh, this is just a beautifully beautifully ground uh, uh, quadruple flat ground blade here. Um, if you can't see, it's a a four inch Pical style fixed blade knife with a gorgeous alternating uh, yellow and red uh, canvas micarta handle that when contoured just has just looks like cheerful, happy orange to me. And I just love this knife because it's a nice contrast between that sort of Ronald McDonald handle. Uh, or no, 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 let's not call it a Ronald. It, it's, it's like a gorgeous sunset handle next to the black of night. That is that gorgeous double-edged blade anyway i i just think this is such an incredible you know i i love this pical style of blade and i think he did it just exactly right with this thing i'm gonna say it again i'm gonna uh, i'm a demarco i beat a dead horse so i'm telling this story again i saw this knife across a crowded room it was the smaller room at, at blade show and i made a beeline for it and i was like if anyone gets between me and that knife before i get to it there's gonna be some sort of debate and uh, it, it didn't happen. There wasn't a quote unquote knife fight. And I got to it. I love this thing. I, it, one of my favorite fixed blade knives uh, because it's just it's perfect. If you look at it, it's perfect. And uh, later on, I found out that Dirk Pinkerton is highly, highly respected uh, in the knife world for his outstanding grinding ability. And while I was at his table, he had uh, Jambaya or Jambia, however you pronounce it. And he had a number of other uh, really impressive modern interpretations of ancient and ethnographic weapons that were just outstandingly gorgeous on this on this par, you know, on par with this knife here. So very, um, very happy to have this handmade Dirk Pinkerton knife on me today just in case things go awry luckily things do not go awry uh to the tune of a pical style knife but hey it's good to know that you have one jic what can i say all right well coming up on the knife junkie podcast we're going to take a look at two new knives uh, one is a mini beg lighter which i've never had and i need to have a beg lighter in my life i believe and then we'll move on to state of the collection where i show you uh couple of things i got at christmas and uh, then knives i've drawn and made plus notable designs uh, but before we get to that uh, just remember that you can become a patron of this show on patreon and um, you can indulge in three different levels of support uh, we have the gentleman junkie at ten dollars five dollar uh, is the tactical and then the three dollar a month is the traditional junkie and you all get interview extras and stickers and other stuff um, and then gentlemen junkies get entered to win a knife so that's every month by the way so check us out on patreon and uh see what helping us can can get for you uh quickest way to do that right down there knifejunkie.com slash patreon again 
I'll say it again. It's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Are you looking for a book about knives or knife collecting, knives and self-defense, or the yearly knife Bible filled with hundreds of pages of information and pictures about your favorite knives? Shop at theknifejunkie.com slash books for your traditional favorites, new books about knives and the yearly knife Bible. Get your favorite knife book and support the show at theknifejunkie.com slash books. We know OKC, Ontario Knife Company, for the Rat, the Rat 1, the Rat 2, all of the awesome fixed blade outdoor knives they make. Uh, We know them for making Ontario up in up in uh, up in New York state right here made right here they make really robust outdoor knives great great outdoor knives and that's what we know them for and we also know them for the classic rat too we talked about this on Thursday night knives with Jared and Eve that knife and a lot of people wrote in too while we're you know, a lot of people commented that is the knife the most robust knife that they know of in their EDC collection that is you know a budget knife and we all know and love it, but Ontario not satisfied with just being in the robust, awesome outdoor knife game. Uh, stepped it up when they started the series called the Tie Twenty Two series. Uh, their first knife in the Tie Twenty Two series, Tie of course referring to titanium, was called the Ultra Blue. The Ultra Blue was a three inch. Well, let's let's get to the good part first. It was a three inch. Uh, titanium frame lock knife with super blue ti- um, anodized titanium handles but to keep the price at $50 they put OS 8 steel on it and I know everyone's groaning and moaning because it's OS 8 um, which as uh, Ben Schwartz over at Knife News comments it seems like you're old when you start hearing OS 8 as the budget option for steel that was the budget option for steel Five to ten years ago, now uh, now we're here, and it's D2 or 14C28N, which are outstanding steels, especially 14C. Uh, but uh, so the Ultra Blue, I don't think really blew up for them. But uh, the second knife in this line has basically the same profile, <clears throat> but they up their game quite a bit. Okay, so it's a titanium frame lock folder in a beautiful bronze anodized uh, handle there. <clears throat> The blade is a Tanto. It is blackened S35VN. So finally, we have a steel that is, uh, well, that makes sense with the handle material. I never understood that. Why would you put a tie, a titanium handle with OS8? It's like, you know, um, it's like putting Pirelli's on, on a Pinto. Uh, so in this case, uh, they are really up in their game uh, with their second one out. And they, they're they calling this thing, what are they calling this? Uh, the Equinox. I like that name, the Equinox. Uh, so this is uh, reaching some equanimity between the blade material and the handle material, perhaps. Perhaps that's what they were going for in, in, their, in their choice of name. Uh, I, you know, I don't know how much it's going to cost yet. I, they're coming out with it this year. It's it's their uh, third reveal for 2022. Uh, uh, last week we talked about that old hickory knife with the with the walnut handle and the and the um, and the folding uh, slip joint 1095 to me or 1075 blade to me that looks way more interesting than this Equinox, which just looks like it's kind of chasing chasing trends a little bit a, a little bit too late day late in the dollar short uh but you know i'm sure it's a nice knife and and i hope i hope it does good things for ontario i love ontario knife and tool or knife company i i, I think of them i you know uh, you think of certain companies for certain things and for them i think of great outdoor uh folders and fixed blades and mostly fixed blades actually uh so when it comes to the fancy stuff i don't know if i want to i don't know if i want to fancy it up with them um but in any case um so <laughs> that is a new one coming out in 2022. If I haven't said so, by the way, Happy New Year. You know, this was a couple of days ago now uh, as we record this, but I realize it's the first time I've spoken with you all uh, since the new year. So I want to say Happy New Year. I hope you all have a, a, an awesome, awesome 2022. And we'll get to my New Year's resolution down downstream. I know we all have them, and I'm sure you, you're dying to hear about mine. All right. Uh, next up is a mini bag lighter from Kaiser. Kaiser Knives, uh, you know Kaiser Knives. To me, they were the. I heard about them 
right after I heard about Riot. Riot was still too expensive for my uh, for my everyday knife uh, buying, but Kaiser came out and boasted similar quality, and uh, or or at least in the same universe quality. And uh, I jumped on it. Kaiser was was doing Matt Cucciara designs, uh, the Dorado, and some other really cool. Uh, large frame lock folders with beautiful sinuous recurve blades that I loved. And then they, and then they, they really, really started to dominate EDC with knives like the bag lighter. And then it seems like for two years or so, they kind of, they kind of were laying low and they're back heavy in 2021. And it looks like 2022 will be a big one for them too. And uh, they've gotten a lot of praise from a lot of our trusted voices in the knife community for having outstanding detents in action uh, just consistently across the board in their knives. And so the Beg Lighter is, uh, is one of their, it is one of their biggest designs ever. It's this, uh, it's gone through a number of design iterations and this is, uh, the newest one, and it's in the mini line. The mini line uh, for the bag lighter took the three and a half inch original blade and dropped it to a three inch, and then also added a really nice looking worn Cliffy sheep's foot thing, uh, blade style uh, to two point eight, not three. Uh, and so this uh, this new one that's coming out is totally blinged out. They've got it's a frame lock. It's a titanium frame lock with a frag pattern that looks awesome. Uh, on the handle. And then it's got M390 blade steel with a hollow grind. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the big lighter here in this mini blinged out version is a hollow ground blade. I I'm sure everyone is psyched and looking forward to that because I don't know. We all love it. We all love hollow grind. And we all know that uh, M390 blade steel can can cut like mad, but it's also, you know, well, in any case, it's nice to get it nice and thin. It's nice to get it nice and thin, and that uh, that hollow grind will will deliver at 139 bucks. It it seems like a pretty good deal. Uh, like I said, I have not had a bag lighter uh, yet in my collection. I would like to get the small uh, Warren Cliff that I was just talking about. That to me looks like the most beautiful version of this thing, and the mo and the one that I would carry the most. So, well, if you're into Kaiser, if you're into bag lighters, and if you're big lighters and if you're into uh, uh you know uh, collectible versions of knives you love you gotta check this one out so that'll be coming out shortly that's 139 bucks not too bad for titanium and m390 in a proven tried and true design uh check out the knife junkie podcast on uh uh thenifejunkie.com you can see all the videos there you can see all the podcasts all the photos everything uh, jim has really focused everything concentrated everything there uh you get show notes you get like a full breakdown of each episode and you're not going to get that on youtube so definitely go over to thenifejunkie.com check that out we also have merchandise there things like this wall hangings that say the knife junkie uh i got i got my family a whole bunch of uh well uh, uh hoodies I, did, I left myself out i need to get myself a hoodie uh, you can get all that stuff over there. Jim's got some really super cool designs over there. Uh, you want to impress your knife friends, and you want to you want to engage your non knife friends. What is knife math? They might ask. And then you say, "Well, it's right here," and that's one of the designs Jim has put together. So definitely go over to the merch uh, merchandise section of thenifejunkie.com and check it out. That's thenifejunkie.com slash shop. All right, coming up on the state of the collection, we look at a Stroop knife and an EDC or organizer that my wife very uh very smartly got for me and then knives i've drawn and made plus notable designs all coming up on the knife junkie podcast and now that we're caught up with knife life news let's hear more of the knife junkie podcast you've seen this knife uh well you saw it on thursday night on thursday night knives uh but i have yet to feature it in a video or right here on the midweek supplemental this was uh my main christmas gift this year and uh it's a beauty this is a stroop knives tu3 tu stands for tactical use i'm showing it in the sheath because it is an excellent sheath and it comes with the what i always thought was overkill um uh what the hell is this called old uh what is this called suddenly i'm having a mind freeze but boker first designed this uh this clip it fits over your belt um dang nabbit uh okay write it down in the comments but 
this was the first time I've used this and really loved it on a daily basis because I've been on vacation for a week and a half. So I've been able to carry this around just on my belt, not stashed in my waistband or anything. And uh, this will come to me in a second. Damn. I know you're yelling at your screen. You're saying that's a and you're saying what the clip name is. OK, so the real star of the show here is this knife and uh, it is a beautiful handmade family made knife and i say family made because the whole stroop family gets in on the action it's uh it's chris stroop and his kids who help with the fitting and the handles and the box making and just all the ancillary stuff that goes on with making knives and i love that aspect of the story but what i love best is this knife uh, you've seen my love for this on other knives, like the black rock knives. I love this sort of pattern, um, when it's sort of ground into the blade, it looks kind of like uh, napped flint or just old steel. Um, something about that. I really, really like, uh, yes, you're seeing my logo laser etched a little touch. My wife had done, which I really appreciate. Uh, it says the knife junkie right there. If you can't see it. But this knife, it's a four and a half inch bladed knife, and it's like a little sax to me. That's that's what really appeals. It's got the the it's got a slight recurve here and a basically a straight edge. I think that that recurve is actually in the sharpening, uh, but it's it, it, it's very effective. Um, I've only used this around the house chores, but uh, I, like I haven't cut wood or anything with it, uh, but that blade is very sharp and the uh, flat grind is pretty it's it's very uh i wouldn't say it's wedge like it's it feels like behind the edge of a hinderer right here so it's not it's not thick it's not thin it's it's set up for what it's originally intended for which is to be a stabby kind of knife so stroop knives they do a bunch of field and utility knives and their most popular is their least expensive, which is not a surprise, but it's a smaller knife than this. But it's got the base basically the same shape, but it's a three inch blade and it's all shrunk down. And it's a it's great for uh, in the pocket carry or around the neck carry or for people with small hands. So he designed this one up to be a, a, a tactical use, stabby um all around camp knife, field, field knife, not camp knife. Uh, but then when you look at the handle, by the way, this is uh, subtly uh, maroon color. It's maroon and black G10. Um, you look at this handle, and this is where the handmade portion uh, becomes less obvious. Now, this uh, handle is made on a mill. So uh, the Stroop Knives recently got its first CNC mill, and they've been using it to great effect to regularize and uh, and speed up the um, production of their handle scales. And I don't know, I, I'm assuming they're all like this, but this handle is so incredibly comfortable. It's got these sort of uh, very softened and widened out Anzo divots uh, coming from the top and bottom that my fingers just fit into perfectly, no matter what grip I'm in. And actually, this is the grip I'm in most often, this reverse grip. It's like Seems like it's made for reverse grip with this uh, with this thumb thumb area here and this bird's beak, which is so perfect for extracting the knife, whether it's edge forward or edge back. Um, so just an outstanding knife. I'm really excited about Stroop knives. Oh, here, let me show you. That's their maker's mark on the other side. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. Well, it's very hard to see, but there's a maker's mark on this side, too. I'm very excited about Stroop Knives because uh, he he's a former army. I, I don't know. He may have he may have been. Well, he's a former army, uh, been on combat tours and been deployed and is now burning it up, making knives that can not only be used in that arena the combat arena but in in all arenas you know he's got the edc he's got a bunch of camp knives and it's exciting he's out of fort bragg north carolina so everything's being made right here in the states and um this is the way i'm heading i just keep uh wanting more and more of these handmade uh custom made knives made right in the states saying custom made is is probably not exactly correct for this because this is one i picked off of his website it wasn't custom made for me but it was handmade 
in his shop. Um, and if I were to have him make one, it would look exactly like this, including that gorgeous maroon handle. So thank you, Bella. That's my wife. She she killed it with this. I really appreciate this beautiful, beautiful knife. And uh, it it's it's going into my collection, my sub collection of handmade, custom made fixed blade knives, uh, things that I really love and appreciate. And um, if you're out there thinking, ah, custom knives, that, that you can find somewhat affordable fixed blade knives if you uh, if you just you know lay off lay off the the Civivi indulgences and stuff like this for a month. Uh, you can pay and get something that's handmade and something that's super special that has just a little bit of the soul of the maker in it. And I think that's cool. All right. Next up, uh, my wife also got me this EDC organizer. And I have one of these. I have a smaller one that actually fits in my pocket. This one is a little bit too big to fit in my pocket, but it has revolutionized everything for 2022. Now, what do I mean by that? I saw this and I was like... I cannot really fit this in my skinny jeans. Uh, you know that that's a joke. I can't really fit these in my pockets uh, uh, comfortably. It, even the one I have that's smaller uh, doesn't, it, it, it bugs a little bit. But I've been thinking of paring down my EDC bag, which is a, is a 5'11 backpack that weighs about 50 pounds. Because every time I leave the house, I'm like, I may need this. And then, and then I think, no, I don't. And then I think, well, now that I've had the thought and I actually do need it and I decided not to bring it, then I'm really going to regret it. So I have a 50 pound bag I carry around with me. It's gotten ridiculous. So I decided with this with this gifting of this cool leather pouch, this is made by uh, Deodrio, Deodrio, I don't know, uh, but with the with the receiving of this pouch and she also gave me a new Fisher Space Pen, which I love, and this Olight, which is a great little flashlight that I have. Uh, um, I have another one of these, a torch for you nerds. That's what I'm talking about. And it, I like it, as, it. It clips on your it clips on your baseball cap, Bill, here, and you can have a headlamp. And people are like, yeah, Bob, that's way old tech. It's not that cool anymore. I still think it's cool. Okay, so I decided why not? since I've been wanting to do an audit of my backpack for a long time and take some of the stuff out, why don't I just do a radical thing, put it in a, in a smaller bag that I already have and base it around this, the essentials. The only thing I'm missing here is fire, but I can put a mini Bic in there and I will. So you got the cutting and all the capability that this, this old, I think this is a mountaineer. I can't remember what it is, but it's pre 1991. I do know that. Um, so all the capability that this Swiss Army knife has with all the capability of this Fisher Space Pen, this awesome little light, and then a lighter. And then I will build my little EDC bag, my new little EDC bag around this. And that's what I have done. And uh, I'm going to do a video called an EDC bag audit. I've been threatening to do that for a long time, but I will now that I've switched it up. And it's all based around these core capabilities. Uh, let's see. Here, here's a lighter. And we'll just pretend that's in there. Uh, so all of the, I'll, I'll get a mini to put in there because it'll fit nicely in there. And I don't want to stretch the leather too much. Uh, but all I'm going to do is anchor it with a little fob to the bag here. Because I have noticed when I open it up, uh, this could fall out. And that would be a tragedy. So uh, kind of a very cool gift. Something I already had. Something I wouldn't have asked for. Now, I find that things that I wouldn't have asked for end up being awesome gifts. Uh, like the Leatherman I use. Never asked for that. My brother got it for me years ago, and I still use it 30 years later. Sometimes gifts you're not expecting end up being the best ones, uh, and I think that's what's happening with this here EDC organizer. Okay, next up and last up, my brother-in-law, and this is going to segue so nicely into our main topic of conversation, but my uh, brother-in-law got me these for Christmas. So what are those? These are ironwood scales. They are uh, half inch thick ironwood scales. And uh, I can tell just from holding them that ironwood really got its name for being like iron. <laughs> I mean, without being without being too much of a dork about it, like this, this wood, you can just feel it is super dense. And he knows uh, my brother in law, James, knows that I've been looking to get back into into knife making uh just you know as a hobbyist 
And so he got those for me. And and I think he got them for himself because uh, now this is our segue into knives I've drawn and made. This is a knife I'm making for him. Uh, I will be making for him in short order. Okay, so uh, just so you know, when I when I make knives, I I have them heat treated elsewhere. They've been heat treated in the past at uh, uh, True Grit out in Sac uh, Sacramento, out, out in California, Northern California, somewhere. And then uh, my my most recent batch was done by Alex Steingraber, the great and powerful Alex Steingraber uh, offered his services. So I'm I'm going to see if he's still up for that uh, for this batch. Uh, but so he has always, my brother-in-law, James, has always commented that he wants a a butcher knife that's upswept and looks kind of like a pirate pirate knife. <laughs> so uh, I had drawn a number of designs for him that that were this, that were, had that upswept butcher knife look but also had swedges and uh, extra finger choils and kind of like uh, we're straddling the line between kitchen knife and camp knife. And now that I look at this, there's way, there's not enough knuckle clearance room on these initial blades. So that when I actually buckled down and decided, all right, James, I'm going to design you this blade. I came up with this so that you would have all of this room to, um, uh, you know, to, to cut on a cutting board and to rock on a cutting board. I gave it quite a nice belly, um, but not, but have plenty of knuckle clearance. See how this curves up right here. I'm going to take this just all the way down to the bottom of this billet and it'll sharpen from here. I think I will do a right-hand side chisel grind so that when he cuts, you know, like a sushi knife, this is a very thin steel too. This is a uh, eighth inch steel so that when he cuts, it will just part the molecules and and whatever he's cutting will just fall to the side i like that sort of asymmetric grind in the kitchen especially well, i'm right-handed especially when the grind is on the right hand side so that the material you're cutting through you get really straight on the side you can see and then you get uh whatever you're cutting like say a cucumber falling off on the angled side uh that you can't that you can't see as well. So that's what I'm doing with this. Uh, but of course it also looks like a kind of a gnarly sort of Bowie knife. And uh, I, I was happy that he wanted something dramatic. I mean, he, he's always liked that sort of upswept butchery knife thing. So I'm giving him something that he can use in the kitchen, use at the camp or use if someone breaks into his house and it would menace and scare. So that is the, that is the first one that is uh, James's kitchen knife. Now I'll show you, the only kitchen knife I've actually made. Uh, but first, I'll show you the the drawing. I have several giant notebooks like this filled with filled with designs. Uh, this is from when I was doing the drawing a day, the knife a day. And here is, this was 2019. Um, so here was the idea for a kitchen knife. Now, when I look at this, uh, I can see now I did not allow with this cool stylish handle for enough knuckle clearance. This cool stylish handle should have been canted up at an angle. And I learned that after making this knife. So this is the knife uh, that I ended up making from that design. And it's uh, chisel ground, like I was talking before. This, it's, it's nice and flat on this side. And then your grind is on that side. And actually, as a blade in the kitchen, it works pretty darn well i gotta say i do really like that chisel uh thing i think that's here there's some flaws there's some major flaws like that gouge in the flat there uh but i think that's why sushi knives are set up like that so that things can can cut away easily and i found that that is the case with this but what i also found is that my tactical knife drawing came into play here with this angle from the handle to the to the blade. I just needed to cant this up a little bit more to allow my knuckles more room for rocking on a cutting board without without hitting my knuckles. But all that being said, it's pretty good, and uh, uh, I think it it merits another uh, it merits a revisitation on another uh, knife another time. You know, I got too many knife designs I'd like to make uh, and zero time to do it, or you know little impetus at the moment okay so but that's all changing with this 
New Year's resolution, of course. All right, next up, Blue Handled Tactical. Okay, this thing. I, I, I got to say, I really love this knife. Uh, it, I still haven't sheathed it, which just goes to show I'm not looking to carry it. It's somewhat heavy. I didn't, I didn't uh, do any weight reduction under the handle. Uh, but the idea here was to have something that looked like a classic style combat knife but in a small four and a half inch EDC, what is this? Four and a half inches? Yeah, it's about four and a half inch EDC blade. Um, but I, I also took some styling cues from the, uh, where is it? From this knife here. I know it looks, it, it's kind of a funny comparison at first, uh, but I was thinking a lot about the SOCOM Elite when I designed this knife. Uh, a lot of it having to do with this forward ramp uh, the thumb ramp here and then the forward ramp. I did that here where you have a uh, sweep up a little bit with those with that jimping and then a sweep down where you can grip back on that forward jimping. Also, the sharpening choil. I, I took a cue from there. <clears throat> and the overall blade shape reminds me a bit of the SOCOM Elite uh, blade shape uh, clip point. So let me show you the design that this thing came from. Um, and you can see the changes that it went through. Now here, let's see. See, this is the, the this is this notebook here. I'll take some of the good doodles uh, from my from my uh, from my sketchbooks or or from my legal pads and put them in there. But this is the original of this. So it it got pretty close. It came pretty close. Originally, it was a uh, set up to be a wedge like Chris Reeve knives Tanto, uh, but in you know, working at it, just just like writing, you'll hear you'll hear writers say that characters that they invent start to speak to them and start to dictate what the needs of the character and the story are, and the story starts to write itself. Well, that's what happens uh, in all creative pursuits, I believe, unless you're just um, unless it's no, I, I I won't even I won't even say an unless. I would say even in the most rigid of creative scenarios, there is that um, play back and forth between the actual creation and the planning. And uh, you can see that here. And I think that's kind of cool. I mean, that's it's the creative process in material form here. Now, this knife, this little EDC knife, I got to say, is very comfortable. This is a knife that would actually be cool to have someone make, <laughs> someone who, who really knows what they're doing. Uh, it would be cool to have this design because it really does feel good in hand. And I, I believe with good blade grinding, which this is not really, uh, it could be an it can be an awesome fixed blade EDC that's very capable. All right, let's see. Next up, oh my Taliban, Taliban. I say it like that, but but I don't I don't mean to. Uh, Taliban is a is a Filipino knife and sword design, and this was. Uh, you can see a Taliban on the wall right here. This is one, um, this curved blade here. I love this thing. This was my dad's sword growing up. And uh, that curve and that that angle of the handle to the blade and then the big deep belly really make it a, a monster cutter slasher chopper. Uh, but it's long and sinuous enough to be nice and pointy and stabby. And so that's what I was going for here. I was going for a tactical sort of modern Taliban um, design and I made this. So here it is in the sheath. You've seen this before. I've shown this off. Uh, I think I showed this off when I actually made it. Uh, gray. I love gray G10 for some reason or gray, uh, Kydex, but it's in a sheath kind of loose in that sheath sort of, uh, almost fits like it would in a wooden sheath, like, uh, like in the Philippines. Uh, but there's, there's basically the knife. Um, it came out pretty close to the design, actually, even in size. Uh, sometimes, sometimes you'll design something not to scale, and then, and then just make it and naturally scale it up without much effort. Uh, here, it's got this is AEBL, and this is this is one of the um, this is one of the ones heat treated by Alex Steingraber. This is tan canvas micarta, sort of faceted, but not really well polished, and that was kind of the that's kind of the point of this knife. It's it's like kind of rough and ready, like a lot of these swords on the wall made from truck springs just in time to go out and battle with them. And then here, this one is, uh, I left the, the heat treat 
pattern on there because it's just so beautiful. It's like this rainbow coloration on the flat of this chisel ground blade. Uh, my my barong back here and my talibang are both chisel ground, uh, just like the the chef's knife I was talking about. You know, it, and and for for cutting food, chisel is is convenient because of the the angle difference and and how you can get what you're cutting to kind of fall away from the blade. But in terms of tactical use, um, uh, chisel ground blade is is nasty because uh, it doesn't it doesn't cut evenly. Uh, it, it pulls on one side of the blade more than it does on the other, and uh, it tracks differently through material, and it's. Uh, gets really 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 intimidatingly sharp so chisel ground i think is great for uh for tactical fixed blade or 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 uh, or folding knives i know a lot of people don't like them i think the instinct is to see a chisel blade and think oh well you just can't grind both sides evenly and though that might be true in my case um that's not why i choose to do it because uh, it's also fun to to try and make a V ground knife like this one. It's a fun challenge, and and uh, that's kind of what I prefer most of the time. Uh, but I had gotten into this very thin steel, and uh, it was working with this chisel grind and for the designs I was making. So, uh, so in this new year, yeah, I'm going to be doing more of this. Um, uh, it, this has inspired me. I have a couple of knives sort of left unmade. Uh, or not unmade, but unfinished that I will pick back up and sheathe and and uh, and send around. And one of them is this one right here. This one uh, I made this a while ago, and this is for my brother. And uh, I I after I got the handle on, I sort of stalled with it because I was so upset about how crappy the blade finish turned out. And it's it's strictly out of lack of discipline and patience. I could have I could have stood there for I don't know however much longer it would have taken to polish out those grind lines and to make this thing look really really refined or as refined as possible which I did not do. Um I was just so excited to have a big Bowie and uh and well Vic sorry sorry it's not as finished as it could be but this way you can thrash on it and I know you can thrash on it cuz this is Another one of those uh, Steingraber heat-treated knives. That's AEBL stainless steel heat-treated to 61 uh, on the Rockwell Rock Rockwell scale. And it's cool. You can, I think the divots are still uncovered. Not on this knife, but some of the divots you can see on some of the other knives he did. And that's kind of cool to see. But let me show you the design for this. So I, I do call this style of knife. I've made, I made a smaller version of this knife uh, quite a while ago i call it the virginia bowie i don't know just because i was in virginia uh, but it's a full bellied uh, bowie blade here with a big swale on the back for your thumb and also for trapping and then a a full long sharpened clip so that's uh, that's what this knife was designed on this design as you can see here the clip uh, the swale is a little shorter the 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 harpoon clip is longer and broader which would allow it to be sharper and keener now here on mine it is sharpened that swedge is sharpened but it's more of a gouging tearing splitting uh axe like edge on the back and you know frankly uh that secondary edge is not meant to be something you slice cheese with it's uh you know in a in a fighting you know for a, a bowie the the traditional one of the fighting moves on a bowie is this back flicking motion. So as someone is thrusting in towards you with their blade, you're flicking the your bowie blade down, whoops, <laughs> using the back, using this sharpened swedge to gash, tear, gouge, and otherwise maim their forearm. It's not meant to slice bread. So, you know, if you can get it sharp, that's good. But uh, like a lot of the cold steel bowies, if it's a wedge, and just comes to an acute zero ground edge, man, that will do a lot of damage, but remain stout and not completely destroy your baton immediately if you need to use it for survival or what have you. So this knife is going to my brother. This is his belated Christmas uh, gift this year. I, I will, won't be seeing him for a little while, but 
Uh, my folks will be in town and they will be bringing this back to him. Uh, something I wanted to mention is this handle shape. Uh, it's got this sort of horse hoof handle shape that really it flares here for your palm and flares here for your pinkies, for your pinky. And you can really, really swing it, choke down, if you will, swing it and, and, and pivot and chop with it in a very, very comfortable way. That is not obviously my design. That's something that they've been doing for years and years and years and centuries on knives. But I, I really love this shape at the end for not only the way it looks, because I think it looks cool, but how it feels in hand when you're when you're swinging and chopping and doing that sort of drumstick pivoting kind of thing. So this one's going to my brother, Vic. I just have to, uh, I just have to make a sheath for it. Just something cursory because he's going to make a leather sheath for it. Uh, next up is my road warrior knife. You've seen this a bit on Thursday night knives recently, but uh, I, I gotta say, I love this knife. <laughs> I call it my road warrior knife because uh, it's, it looks unfinished. It looks like something, uh, that was made in a ditch or something <laughs> like that. But uh, it's got, this is AEBL. It's also chisel ground. I left all of the um, the scale on it or the heat treat coloration, um, except for the edge. You know, I pre-ground this so, uh, so I wouldn't be grinding into heat treated steel. I do not have a very robust setup in terms of grinder. So I had to do that. But this knife, uh, oh, and then, it's got a micarta handle uh, scales that are heavily knurled, very sharply knurled, and they're intended for um, uh, 1911 handle scales, uh, but I used them for this knife. And then I, since I forgot to drill my holes in this before it was heat treated, and then just, it, it just wasn't worth it to try and drill it afterwards, uh, I decided it needed a mechanical connection, so I wrapped it in cord in, in jute cord and then shellacked it and, and just sort of finished the road warrior look. Um, it is extremely sharp and I'll show you what it came from because um, this was a knife, you know, they say, uh, they say invention, it, wait, wait, necessity is the mother of invention. Sorry, that took me a second. Well, I had a piece of steel that was shaped like this. And I wanted to maximize that that piece of steel. You can see the red outline of the steel. I made that design and pretty much, uh, look at that, it <laughs> fit almost exactly onto that, uh, onto that design and onto that uh, billet of steel. Actually, that is exactly it. That's probably the most exact I've been with any design from paper to uh, steel. So, some of my the coolest things I've designed or made uh, just around the house have been on random little pieces of steel like this. So I'm not showing all the knives, uh, but I wanted to show the ones that have pencil on paper representation. And then since we're here on this page, I want to show this uh, this design up top. This was my idea for a five and a half inch cold steel sax. Uh, I thought if Cold Steel could make this using their their thumb plate, you know, their their waveable thumb plate and the triad lock and a big G10 handle or 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 otherwise with a blade that looked like this, I thought that would just be so cool. <laughs> and, and you know what? They didn't. They haven't made it yet. Uh, but I I think Cold Steel should do something like this. Something taking advantage of that sax shape and then taking advantage of the the triad lock and the fact that they are the ones who can make these big damn knives. They're so cool. I wish they would just do it, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe if I scream loud enough, or maybe when I get the stick man on the show uh, uh, from cold steel, maybe I can convince him. Okay. Next up is one that I've done recently that, that you've seen um, here. I make them in G10 right now. I call them the liberator. They're these little Pical style uh, G10 handled knives that hide away in your hand or in your pocket. They're uh, they're they're sharp enough to be thrust into someone. Uh, also chisel ground for stoutness here. They're sharp enough to be used to poke someone to get them off of you to get them away from you. They are not sharp enough to cut the cheese with. 
Uh, and then you can see the angle that that they protrude from the hand. Uh, it's like a claw reaching out. I've sort of sharpened both sides. You can get an abrasion with that. You can you can get a nasty tear cut with that. But it's you know it's G10. You can't. And this one I haven't finished yet. Uh, but this is a small Pical style knife that I have created from these designs. Here's one. And then here's, here's another. And this year, I'm going to make these in metal. I want to make this in metal. I really think it's a good design uh, for, for what I'm going for. And, and, and not everyone can or likes to carry a, a, uh, a fixed blade knife. But if you are carrying one and you want it to be for uh, self-defense, I think I have a small, discreet, effective design here. And, uh, you know, it's not reinventing the wheel. It's it's a variation on the fruit knife that we've seen a lot. Uh, but to me, it just fits. It fits the hand well. I've taken them to work and put them in all sorts of hands, see how they fit. Uh, given them to my daughters, given them to uh, uh, friends with giant hands like like sausages. And they seem to fit everyone's hands, of course, differently, but comfort comfortably across the board. So uh, yeah, I'm going to make more G10 uh, versions of these, but I'm also going to make uh, I'm going to make some metal versions of these. I just I just really like them. And I got to say, I, I'm a sucker for that jute cord. Look, I know you've you know, you've seen this on this knife here and you've seen it on um, a lot of these sort of fruit knives and Libre fighting knives and little tiny stashable knives. I just love that look. Uh, but I would like to make this in in steel and Japanese cord wrap, um, you know, and as well as other cord wraps to keep them thin and as discreet as possible. Of course, you can also do that with a very thin G10. I might might try that too. But um, first off, it's going to be just some cord wrapping and making them small and discreet. Um, okay, so this last one I'm going to show design and knife. I, I am not, of course, taking credit for making the knife. I will only take credit for, for. I'm not even going to take credit for designing the knife because I didn't design the knife. I'm just, it's it just passed through me and um, took on some of my particular spec uh, specs and then went to the maker. And of course, I'm talking about my 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 hog tooth knives, loveless. Uh, sub hilt fighter and here is the original design that i sent uh to matt of hogtooth knives and as you can see it's the traditional um traditional loveless sub hilt fighter what's a sub hilt it's this secondary hilt down here uh, that partitions your forefinger from your middle finger and allows for um pulling out the knife and just it, it gives you great control of the knife, not just in extracting it from whatever you've thrust it into, but also in terms of manipulating the blade itself and keeping, uh, it's almost like a, tr a trigger or like, again, I'll, I'll reference a drumstick. If you ever uh, play the drums, you know, it kind of swivels off your fingers here. Uh, that allows, that sub hilt allows for that kind of action. Uh, it's a long slender clip point blade and both edges are fully sharpened all the way up to the Ricasso. I'm not talking just a sharpened clip. We are talking a a full on sub hilt fighter. So I sent him this. I said uh, uh, wrought iron guards, uh, short top guard, uh, stag handles, double edge, pattern weld Damascus. Like go all out. And then this is this is what showed up. <laughs> First of all, great sheath. I love this sheath. It reminds me of a lady's corset which of course is appealing, uh, but just beautifully, beautifully made leather. I mean, this man can do leather. He could make his whole career on it, but uh, he chooses to make these gorgeous knives. Uh, this is 1095 and uh, um, uh, 15 and 20. And I can't remember how many layers now. I'd have to, I'd have to dig out the specs, but he just layered the crap out of this, made a, just an absolutely beautiful billet. It's razor sharp on both sides hollow ground and this top 
uh, bevel is shorter than the bottom bevel. A detail that I did not spec uh, specify, but I really love. And uh, that's, that is the traditional way of doing it. Uh, again, he indulged me with the shortened uh, tops, um, top quillion. So these quillions are made, this guard and the sub hilt are made from uh, salvaged wrought iron from the Longfellow Bridge in Boston. This is an antique bake light, uh, I believe, this black material here. And then this gorgeous stag. And this, this handle has 20 pieces in it with all the pins and the different way he had to frame this uh, to fit it to the tang. <laughs> it was a, a, a true struggle and a real work of art. We actually, uh, there you go, hog tooth knives. We had a whole podcast where I brought Matt on and we talked about the making of this knife. It was an arduous task um, and and he emerged a better man and a better knife maker for it. And, uh, and I emerged a better knife collector and a very, very happy person uh, with this thing. I love this knife. And of course, I didn't build it, but I, I, I drew it out on paper. And then months later, it came to me in this solid form, uh, for which I'm eternally grateful. Um, so I just wanted to show two, a couple of other designs here that um, are worth looking at. Now, this was the second notebook I started using for my, for my uh, one design a day. Here's a patata I'd like to make. Um, but let's see, I'm not going to do that on every page. Let's see. Okay. This knife, <laughs> I want this knife. This is a folder. Uh, this is my, this is a sort of tip of the hat to early Anzo. And, um, but it's got that same sort of handle that appears on the Bowie. Um, Folders are way, way, way off for me. Here's one that I designed that looks, that I realized looks just like my Voodoo, uh, but that was before I actually got the Voodoo. So a lot of what you see out there in the world trickles into your designs. You know, you'll you'll sit down and draw. What's my ideal knife? Like here, I drew my ideal hard use EDC, and now that I look at it, it's got tidbits of everyone in it. It looks like a tad dauntless. It looks like a, it, it, so it, in other words, it's just, you cannot escape your influences. It's just a matter of marshalling them in an original way. And here's, here's the last one I'm going to show. Uh, this one here looks like, I, I, I was flipping through and I saw this and I remember when I drew it, I was like, God, that is so right on. Something about that. It's so perfect. And then I realized, oh, uh, it's sort of my take on the SOCOM. Like it doesn't look that different from a SOCOM. And then I real, and then and then the knife starts to look uh, kind of ugly and stupid to me, <laughs> you know, because someone else did it so much better. So, do you draw knives? Let me know if you do. Send me pictures. I'd love to see what you've designed. I mean, there's so much fun. Who doesn't sit down and doodle from time to time? Oh, this is. I'm sorry. This is the last one I want to show. This is one that I designed. Uh, this is a wine key, a tactical wine key. Yes, that's right. So here you have, this is the, the metal part that folds down. You, here's the bottle opener or the cap lifter. And then this goes and pivots down. And here's the corkscrew for, you know, the wine key aspect. And then to remove the foil, you have a three inch serrated Pecal style M390 chisel ground blade that locks. And so this is uh, something that you would use uh, at a party that gets out of hand, it starts out real classy. Everyone's like lining up for their, for their, uh, for their glass of Chateaubriand, and uh, you pour it for them. Everyone gets all nice and toasty on expensive wine, and then something, something goes off, and and things go left. Well, at least, at least you have this in your pocket. This is your very own tactical wine key from Demarco Knife and Tool, coming in twenty seventy three. But anyway. So this is the kind of uh, this is the kind of place I allow my mind to go. I think it's good for us all uh, to 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 flex our creative muscle. You never have to show it off. This I realize is like a a total ego trip. Here, let me show you my drawings. But hey, I went to art school. That's that's my training. You know, ego tripping. So 
There you go. Uh, do you have designs? Let me know. Have you designed a knife? Have you made a knife? Uh, I know. Uh, I know a number of fans of the show are in various stages of making knives um, and getting better every day. Showing me, sending me pictures, uh, and I think it's really, really cool, really awesome. And also, not for nothing, a great way to be somewhat self reliant. Can you make tools you need? Uh, call the listener line 724-466-4487. Let me know any of that stuff. Uh, you know, uh, are you making knives? Are you designing knives? I am interested. Uh, number of people in the community doing so. Uh, also for liner notes for this show, go to uh, the slash 281 and download us on all of the podcast apps, Apple, Google, iHeart, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, and a whole host of others. All right. That's about it for me today. Thanks for listening. And thanks for checking out uh, these knives and the things I've done. I'm, I'm, uh, well, I'm happy to have this uh, platform to show them off. Hopefully I get to make, uh, some knives this year and I will show them off as they are made. All right. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher. I, I, uh, I, uh, very much appreciate your being here. And I know Jim does too. Thanks for listening. Here's to a wonderful 2022. May your year be healthy and prosperous. Uh, have a good one. And until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast you